All right, guys, welcome to Lennox Billy channel. Um, today we're looking at the pip market exam. So, guys, I'm telling you this if you do not appreciate any of my videos, appreciate this one because I'm really, really sick and I'm really, really trying. I don't know if I'm going to need to put the end of this video, to be honest. But my heart don't give me to just lay in bed and not try for these young students. Well, the problem is are this exam in the nation all right so i'm going to try my best to complete it and as accurate as possible so your persons can understand all right so let's look at question one it says examine the venn diagram below and it says that 30 students were asked if they have a brother or a sister and they say 21 of a brother they're just putting that as a read it's very important to just put the information as you go along. 16 have a sister. So you're just putting in information. 8 have a brother, but not a sister. All right. So that, that one was actually given already. All right. So we know we looked at all the information now. Then we can see what they say. They say, how many students have neither a brother nor a sister? All right, so let us go ahead and solve this. Again, guys, you are encouraged to try. This won't be a rush video. Uh, hit the like button right away. So, I think I deserve that. So go ahead, I'm gonna start in one minute or so. All right, so they say you now 21 of a brother. So what it is saying, all of this combined, they should have 21, right? So all we can do is just sub, sub, um, what subscribe? Sub, um, subtract eight from 21, and that will give us this number right here, right? So that's 30. Remember, right this only have brother alone, eight brother alone, but no sister, right? So this is a combination. So this gives you the 21. And from here, it's kind of a cake walk. So it says 16 of a sister. So that means 13 and what makes 16, right? So that would be three, All right? So we still need to find out this note. How can we find out that? We know that there are 30 persons in R, right? In the, in the, in the survey. So the right idea would be 8 plus 13, uh, 21 plus 3, 24. So right here would be 6. So these persons right here, they don't have a brother nor a sister. So that would be 6. All right. So let's go down to the other side and see if we can get it. So they have neither a brother nor a sister. All right. So they have them alone. All right, the expanded form of the number is shown below. We have 4,000 plus 1 plus 80 plus 600. Which number represents the number in standard form? Go ahead and attempt that, guys. Put that in the comment section. I notice the pep parents they don't realize how oh, important YouTube is yet, but hopefully, in time, they will. YouTube is one of the best places that the kids can go to learn, especially Mr. Benny channel. All right. So let's go. So it's 4,000. This is a kind of a, they, they, they are a little bit smart. They put the one there. What we just put the 600 to teach you guys well because trust me, it's the diff most difficult exam here is. All right. So this is one, eight, six, and four. So therefore, it is. All right. Number three, go ahead and attempt this one, guys. 
and say, what are the next two terms in the sequence below if the pattern continues? Right, go ahead and try that. As I say, guys, this won't be a rush video. As I really want, this is a mock exam. This is the most important paper that I'm going to do for the paper exam I do. All right. So go ahead and attempt it. And if you're watching the playback, hit the like button, pause the video, and try each question. All right, so for the persons who are in grade five, grade four, this is something that you should be watching. All right, so we have 41 and we paid with 47. So let's just assume that they're adding six right here. And we have 47 and end up with 54. So this is a constant where they add six, but here they add seven. And here now they add eight. So you kind of see the pattern now, right? So let's see if this was 90 plus 71. So it means that for 71, we're going to add 10, right? And that is going to give us 81. And this time, we're going to add 11. But it's like each time adding an extra one to So that will give us 90. All right. So she's working. Uh, what's her name? And I can't answer this. Anyway, it's B, 81, and 92. All right. Again, guys, it's a wish statement is true. The only factors of Four, R, four, and one, that is not true. Two is also a factor. The only factors of five are five and one. Yes, prime, five is a prime number, and prime number only has two factors. So once you see this, you can just get those, all right? All right, this one says now, which operation should be placed in the box to make the number sentence below two? Is it plus? Is it minus, is it times, or is it divide? All right, this one is not very hard, so it would be divide. Okay, the light button if I just start hitting on the scale, I'll just tell us right here, what I want here, so how much is, all right? So before we do that, we have to inspect, see how many are between 50 and 54, all right? So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So it means that they're going up by point one. All right. So this is 55, 56, 57, 58. All right. So this will be 50.8. So we're going up by two, nothing different, right? But they're going up by one. So that would be 50.8. 51 would be on the other side, right? Because if I notice, start in the beginning. So 51.2 would be on the other side. Very important, guys. Um, you know this thing, all right? So let's move on to number seven. Which of the following options below is not an example of a squared of a square number? 49. Now seven times seven gives you 49. Five times five gives you 25. Four times four gives you 16. If no number can be squared or multiplied by itself, it will do six. Hit the like button for the next minute, guys. Great work, man. I'm sick and I'm trying. Come on, let's go. Hit the like button, man. If you don't appreciate me, you know, come on, guys. You better, man. Hit the like button. Share with someone to read the, read the rule below and use it to answer number eight. In a pattern, each term in this series is formed by multiplying the previous term by a constant. Now, a constant means the same number, right? Oh, see that? They even say that. The same number, all right? Which pattern would follow this rule? There's nothing times zero, can give you another number, right? So we can eliminate these two. Anything times zero or zero. So we want to think logically. We need to look multiply zero by it to give you one. So already we know that it's between these two, right? All right, let's just say, remember, the telos is multiplying. So one times three, that's three. So we have to constant with the tree. So we have to multiply this by three. Three trees is nine. So this can't be this. Yeah. So it has to be this. All right, let's see. Just to just check, even though we know it should be. One times two is two. Two times two is four. Four times two. So you see, the constant is two. I multiply by two. So it's like two to the zero, two to the one, two to the two. So I'm going to see what I'm class now, guys. So I'm going to see what I'm class. So big up in my future. Two days. You know, known yet, but that way, trust me. All right, so that would be B. Which of the following shows the reciprocal of 0 0.05? Now, this is a very tricky one. Now, we can rewrite this as a 5 over 
100. All right, so it's by 100 data, but that's that trick because it's very typical. So we have to flip it. So we have to flip it as 100 over 5. And that would work out to great. All right. So B, number 9, is very interesting to you for this. All right, there are 30. There are 30 class members in a play. During a rehearsal, only 18 of them showed up. What percent of, of class showed up? All right. So out of 30, you know that it's 30. Let's see, 18 turn up. All right. So percent means out of 100. So that's about 100 percent. All right. I'm looking at these numbers and I'm thinking as to be 60. Why? It's more than half turn up, right? And this 60 is the only number that is more than that. And I want you guys to think about that also, logically, right? Three into three, one, two, eight, two, six. I'm just teaching you guys how to do maths, you know? So then I just give answers, all right? I'm teaching you to think logically and I'm teaching you concepts. So guys, here instead of skip, pick up my number. Let me, 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 let all right, so you say in a class that has 60 students, 31 like mathematics, 22 like language, and eight students like both maths and language art. Which of the following diagram best, best represents the information? This is like 39 like maths, and 30 like that, 58. So I'll go on the side. Uh, this this best stuff, but I guess it's 45 years so that's what the X so that there's a so many them as well. But it's of 61. How much is one going on? It says 16 are universal. So it's like, yeah, we don't have to do that. Let's see the other one 23, 8, or 14. But isn't that the same thing that we see here? So, oh, one at 23, 8, or one at 22. All right, so the problem is that 31 and that. 39 plus 39 plus 32. See the other one, it makes sense. 31, yeah. So it's B. We're going to go with you. We're going to work out. Um, see the 8 plus that 31, 8 plus that 22. But they did say that, right? Because this person did both language art and mathematics. Even though in reality, everybody did both. In a distance, and only them 8%. Just for the question. You know, my turning is uh, compulsory. All right. So it says now, in a box, the ratio of red marbles to blue marbles is 74, which of the following could be the total number of marbles in the box. All right. So we are dealing with ratio. So let's look at this. And that's equal 11. So let us see which of these is a multiple of 11, and that will be 20. Very nice question. Yeah, I'll take that from the middle. In, uh, you guys are encouraged to try the question. Which diagram below shows the ratio of unshaded boxes to the shaded boxes? So the unshaded must come up front, and the unshaded is a bigger number, which is five to two. All right, this uh, yeah, eliminate the smaller number in terms just to go through and eliminate the smaller number because they told us that the unshaded is a bigger portion. That's what that means. Right. So we can just eliminate the name. I didn't even have to try a weapon. I just eliminate this. We got one, two, three, four versus one, two, three, four, five, six. So already she did all do. So it left us with just this. We don't even have to work out the ratio itself. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three. So it goes with this. This is the only one where the unshaded is greater. All right. So guys, just look at the questions very carefully. All right. Do your best until I become your teacher. For our teacher concepts. All right, just keep the moment and tell mommy say you found this awesome teacher and you are the little baby. All right, so number 14, Richard is rolling a number few with faces number one to six. What's the probability as a result that the next roll would be an even number? So one to six, so the only even numbers are three, three out of six, so that would be C. All right, all right, so in the, fig in the figure below. We'll go up a bit more. Yeah, like when you look like that, just focus on this. In the figure below, points P, A, and R lie on the same line. So P, A, and R 
is lie on the same line. So it says now, what is the sum of the measure of angle P A S? So that's this angle. This angle right here, that's P A S. What in the middle is the angle? And the S E R versus this one right here. So what they want, sum, right? Now, how much would these two angles add up? Now, if you look at it, it says angle on the same line. That's the first thing, right? And this is the an angle at the straight line. So all of this add up to 120 degrees. All right, so that would be P. Hit the like button, right? Hit the like button right away. Don't be selfish now. By not hitting the like button, you're not helping a child who this can reach out to them. The weight of a slice of bread is 2.5 milligram. How many slices are there in 22.5 milligram loaf of bread? Now, all we have to do is just divide 22.5 by this, right? So to do that, you can even look at the answers and stuff and say why. You know, say it has to be nine. Right? It can be 11 because 11 times this would be 22 plus the five, five, right? So that means it can only be nine. Alright. Hit the like button for the next question, guys. Don't not deal with it. the like button, man. Press somebody like the like button. Alright. So to divide now, we still have to do it even though we know it's a nine. Um, so we have 2.5. So that we can it will be decimal point. So we have to do the same point. Alright, we are dividing by two. Now 25 into 22, you can't, right? So now it's a 25 into 225. Now, if I, if I should get 250, that would be 10, right? So this is short of 25, so that would be 9 already. So guys, just reason it out. Look at the questions, read the questions at least three times. I told my students that at least five times, they read the question and so on, right? Let's move on to 17. Which of the following best represents the location of M on the number line shown below. Remember, guys, I'm really, really sick. But I'm really, really trying. Hit that like button, please. Please. All right. So they want us to show the location of M. So let us investigate. Before we even look at the options, now we are at one and we need to go to two. Let's see how many spaces. All right. I'm going to check for zero. So one, two, three, four. So it's four. So Obvious that we're going up by quarter, right? So it's a quarter, then half, three quarter, and so forth. But now we are going to two, so we are one, this point in would be one and a quarter. So there's a one and a quarter right here, there's a quarter here, and by it in half, then three quarter, and then one. So it should be very simple for you guys. So number seven. Guys, I'm very confident about my students. All right, Amanda, Marcia, Tash, and Rick each, each took the ability test. Amanda got seven out of 10 items correct. I guess it's a different test. Marcia got three out of four correct. And Tash got four out of five question correct. Ricky got two thirds of the items correct. Now they say no, which who received the greatest number of items correct on their ability test? So I think they want us to find the percentage and the best percentage. So even though Amanda got seven, doesn't necessarily out of ten, it doesn't necessarily mean that he got a better score than Marcia because Marcia only got three questions, um, four questions and she got three correct. So what we do, we convert it to percentage. So then the motor so all right. So this so for 70 percent all right three quarters of the number of something percent this 24 one or to that 25 three times that is a 75 but three quarters which is a 75 percent let's go four to five all right so five into this one five into this 20 and what time is that 80 percent all right and then now for the last one, two over three times one hundred percent. And this is now we know what is our about, right? Two hundred divided by three is sixty-six. 
right? So we see that it would be highest mark would be both of five, and that would be Tash. So Tash would be that person who got the most correct. So Tash would be the correct answer. Let's move on to 19. The diagram shows two similar trapezium. Use item 19 and 20. Let's small it up so you guys can see what I'm going on. This is a very interesting question. All right, now it says, what is the ratio of the side AB? So let us mark the side that we're looking for. Guys, you can do this, all right? AB, so A to B, and OP. So this now, OP. So let me strip it. So these will focus in on the top and the bottom parts. And I say, what is the ratio? All right, so let us count the units. How many units make up this, this one? Let me change the age now. Let me start here. Let me just start here. So we have one, two, three, four. Now, both of them are the same number of units, which is four. So it's one. Four to four. And we can break it down to one to one. All right, so this one is A. Let me change about the color now. Hit the like button on peeps, so now I'll deal with it. The like button on. We're halfway there you now. I'm trying to make it to the edge. I need the encouragement. Come on. If you need encouragement, I need to make it to the edge. What is the ratio of the perimeter of ABCD to the perimeter of MNOP? So let us see which they put first. That's very important. Trapezium ABCD, which is the bigger one. All right. So let us look at this now. We had already between these the units so we're going to compare a b and m a but since they are similar we can compare those right so let us do that so let's see how many units they get one two so it's two versus that right, let's just see how many units down here so just to compare p go and b c one two three four five so what you can realize is that this one is two times A, B, C, D is two times that. So it would be two to one. Very interesting question. Now please step put the bigger one first. If it was the other way around, it would be one. So students, be very careful. They can check you like this. Make sure you know your stuff. Take your time to through the question. I always tell my students, write what they ask you for. All right? So it says, on Chantel Homer, the answer to the subtraction problem was marked incorrect. Which of the following is one of one way for her to discover that the answer is incorrect? All right, so they are saying that, oh, we're gonna check our answer to see if it's right. 183 plus 48, no, so that, no, that, no, that, right? So what you could do is add these two. So I put them on this one. That would be this, right? Oops, change that little bit. All right. So, a very nice question, that one. You're off with you guys. Hit the like button. So, all the questions, let's go. A map of four streets is shown below. Which of these, which two streets appear to be perpendicular? So, perpendicular means they meet at right angles. All right. I guess the one here we um, run across with the orange street, right? So these are orange street and green street. So it would be orange street and green street. If it was parallel, it would be right. So parallel would be Barry Street and Green Street. Right, but King Street I go down so and Iron Street also, so that they're going to meet at the right angle, right? right? So they are perpendicular, they meet at the right angle. All right. Sorry, guys. I'm going to say I'm sick. Hit the like button for the sick man hour. What fraction of the grid is a shade? You know, this, this can be a little bit tricky, but what we can do, guys, is just focus on this because it's uniform, right? That means whatever fraction run across right here, it's gonna be true. So first we count how many units there are here. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, 
seven, nine, ten. All right, so that's four shaded out of ten. And this is constant throughout, right? We reduce it by two, so that's two. Ten divided by two, that's five. So that would be two. All right, remember, guys, it's uniform. You don't need to sit down and count all of these. It's uniform. Four out of this, and it's constant. So that would be two, three for the answer. Let's move on to 24. Remember, guys, you're encouraged to try the questions. I hope you guys are trying. All right. What is the value of 4 over 15 divided by 2 thirds? What's the answer for that? And guys, if you can watch this video more than once before exam, watch it in the morning, too, all right? Before you go home. All right, let's go to the solution. All right, so we know that when it's going to get a little bit there. So it's, uh, all right, so when you have this risk, um, she, oh, she two over three, it becomes three over two, and then three to three, one, two to this, two, four, so that's one, and that's two. That two times one, so that it should give us anything that that's two over five. So that would be all right. All right, this always come on the line. So I don't like both these, but we're gonna mess it up. All right, let's move on. 25. A baby weighs 7,250 grams at birth. At the end of eight months, the baby weighs two and a half times its birth weight. How many kilograms did the baby weigh at the end of eight months? All right, so let us look at it. Um, I'm going to try to do it the simplest way that a uh, six-year-old, the most so a grade six student can copy. All right, so it says two and a half. So what we're going to do, we're going to double it first. So two, and then we find a half of this. So let's do that. So this is the original. Now we need a half of this. So we're going to divide seven by a half, so that's 36, and this by, so that's two by. So in all, this is one and a half times. So you see that, guys? I didn't, we don't need multiply. But if you guys can multiply, you can go right at it. So this is five, five and five, ten, and that's two, so that's two, carry one, six or two, eight or two, ten and one, eleven, so that's one, carry one, right? So now we are uh, now, so that's ten and uh, eight. So we get eight. Now we know that 1,000 grams, teacher and teacher, you know, people right here, 1,000 grams. So you guys in class, whenever you're ready, all right, peeps? So Ben is here when you're ready. 1,000 grams is 1 kilogram. So it means that we're going to be dividing 80,000, 125 by 1,000. So we have three zeros, one, two, three. Now the decimal point is right here, and I'm going to use change again. First, let's just see it. Right. We're going to move three places to your left, so that's one, two, three, so that's 18.125. I absolutely love this paper, we go to the ministry for this, this is a very good um, paper. I want to take that away from them, so far it's been really, really a nice paper, challenging, so what? Alright, so it's you know, when folded along the dotted lines, which geometric solid is formed? Is it a pyramid, a cylinder, a rectangular prism, or is it a triangular prism? All right. And this would be a triangular prism. Would have done this with your teacher, right? All right. So this one shows a frequency chart and it shows the outcome and the frequency. So what this means, it means that red occurs one, two, five, six, seven times. Red occurs seven times. Blue occurs 5, 10, and 1 in 11 times. And white occurs 1, 2, 3 times. From the survey, right? And green occurs 5, 6, 7, 8. How are you guys have the full understanding? All right. The teacher randomly takes a marble from a box, records the color in chart, and then returns the marble to the box. She does this 30 times. So in all, frequency should add up to 30. A result in the chart below, chart each time. Chart shows her results. So this is the result of 
period in time, the frequency. All right, what is the experimental priority of drawing a white marble? Before we go to the white marble, we know that the denominator should be 30 because you have 30 marbles in all. Now, let us see they're going to select a white. What's the probability of first selecting a white? And white is one, two, three. So that would be three out of 30. So that's actually it. Clerk is unsure and then add the ten percent sales tax or to add ten percent sales tax to the product first and then apply twenty percent discount. Which chart result in the lower price to the customer? Now looking at it, I can I'm just gonna show you guys how oh, let's just use a hundred dollars as the price. Right? So we're gonna try a method one first, which is to add tick off twenty percent and then add ten percent. So that's it, right. So first we're gonna add twenty percent to this. No, 20% discount means you take off 20%, right? So we're gonna do that first. So take off 20%. Just gonna use this as a bit of a bit, right? So this can be so that's twenty dollars, right? So it means that we're gonna take off from the hundred, we're gonna take off so we are at eighty dollars. Sorry about that, guys. I think my internet went all right. So what we what we are worried, we say we're gonna find ten percent. Uh, go to chain up that. All right, yeah. So let's go back from the start. We found the discount, so we are eighty dollars now, and now we're gonna add the tax. So let us see ten percent tax. Losing start entirely. I was cut off for about two minutes. So okay. All right, so let's go. Um. We need to find 10% of 8, right? So let's go. So that, 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 that. So that is 8, right? So we add that. So in all, the customer would pay each month to see. So the customer would pay $88. Option 2 now says we find 10%. We add 10% tax first. So it's just, you know, we could do this 10, right? So we're going to add it. So we are at $110. And then now we find 20% discount. So 20%. The best price. All right, so this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy. So we are at $22. So, which one we add first? Oh, the discount is going to be $22. It's a mix of customers. All right, it's a sales tax, 10% tax. So, yeah, that's the tax. No, the discount. So, I'm correct. So, it's 110 now minus 22. Two from zero, you third. So this become 10. Yeah, it works out the same thing. And then 2 from 8. So it doesn't make a difference. What is it? I wasn't expecting that. Let me just check back something. Because I was all power. Wondering what's going on with my name. I think I might, I might have. Um, so Alright, so it's 110 minus 22. So that's 18. So it doesn't make a difference. Wow. The table shows the times. The table shows the times Sandra work and the amount of money she earned during the four different weeks. Alright. So 15. So that 20, give it that 24, give it that 30, give it that. All right. Based on the information, how much will Sandra get for part four? All right. So let us see if the rate is constant. Uh, That's the easiest one to divide, I think. So this is gonna leave five. So this is gonna leave five two. So the rate for this one is eight point two five. We just check so twenty four times. All right. So guys, I've established that the rate is eight dollars and twenty five cents. 
Food chart says average 120,000 feet per day during the summer. Which graph shows the relationship between the number of trees and the number of frozen trees? So, so 120, so bam. 120. Four times 120 are 600. That's all. And this is so. So if we just check it, 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 it an essential point there, and school of this, and you can eliminate five. Okay, five, all of them could have six on there. This will be five, no, you can eliminate this thing. Uh, we make the other one there. Five, six, seven, one, this will be two. Uh, five, six, seven, eight, no, this will be two. So it's between these two, all right? So let's just investigate. So why would this tree test like? So it's definitely a seed. All of them seems to be the dot right and target, but this one, Line is straight. Line. It's supposed to be a straight line. Hit the like button, guys. I'm sick and I'm trying. Come on, hit the like button. Try to watch it by more than direct and All right, so this one can have more than one. So. Identity identify two pairs of congruent shapes from the option. All right, so the options. Congruent linearly exactly see The orientation is not necessary. So it's just this. The other one of this, this, the other unit of this, this one of this. After the A and C, right? I just see this. It doesn't matter, congruency can be different, different orientation. So it's A and C, and so that's the rectangle. That was pretty easy. All right, 32. If the ratio of girls to boys and a trap is 5 to 6, so let us write information. Don't be a E and play 0. Write information, guys. Girls to boys. When you have the information in front of you, it means more sense. So 5 to 6, right? Which possible number of girls to boys is on the trap? So, girls are small, all right? So, my quick just kind of eliminate the ones where the, where, the, where, the, where, the, where, the, where the number bigger. So, this. Girls bigger than boys, so they put in the minute. You can't be this girl, this bigger. This bigger. So it's between B and C. Somewhere on the reason that exam. All right. So girls must be smaller. All right. So no, it must be a multiple of five to six. So when I break it down, that's it. Alright, so divide by seven, seven five, thirty five, seven to that. You can see now six. There's no number of going to twenty or twenty four. I and you get five six, right? Five into twenty, that's four. And five can go in at the Alright, if we use four. Four into twenty five, four into twenty four, that's six. Oh, this is a trick question. If I use four, four into this five, four into this six. All right, I'm going to use seven now. Let's see if I'm going to. Oh, two statements. Both of them are correct. No, let me see what I'm Guys, whenever you instruction carefully, you know, both of them are correct. They can be B and C. Seven to this, five. Seven to 42, six. So both of them are five, six. As I was saying, I oh, wouldn't make an error, but I remember reading an instruction of this. I know this is a which two, all right? So it's a each square below is divided into section of equal size. Which two squares of 62.5% of shading? 
All right, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six. And we have one, two, we have six out of eight. Six out of eight will be two thirds, so that's 66%. Let's use in my knowledge now. Jump it is five. Right, one, two, three, four, five, so that's five over eight. All right, we'll see the other one now. But that would, I think that would be one. Just see, we have one, two, three, four, five, and one, two, three. So that's five out of eight again. And this one now is one, two, three, four. So that's four over eight. So the two now would be D and five over eight. Chris walk to school. 18 of the 24 days in the month of March, which two values are equivalent to the fraction of the school days in March that Chris walked to school? So 18 over 24. Let's break it down. So that's 16 to this March. Now three quarters is the same as 75%. You guys will have done that in class. Or we can write as a decimal. 0.75. This is really, really an awesome paper. Really, really awesome. All right. So you are looking for two options, guys. So it's A and C for that one. Hit the right button now, guys. Look for the great work of All right. Paul is making an Atford salt with the recipe below. 12 ounces of Atford salt. So 12 ounces of chocolate chip, three quarter cup of heavy cream, one tablespoon of butter. If Paul is going to double the recipe with two responses, which two responses will determine how many cups of every cream will be required so every so it's three quarter so i'll put double three quarter and single one so we can either add it to add it to the so the lcm of four already so it will be six over four one and a half let's see which other one so one and a half is this also three over two is the same as one and a half i absolutely love this paper this is awesome stuff right I think this is what they're gonna use. This portion they use to separate students and decide which school they actually do. Which and I don't agree with it, you know, but I understand what they're doing. The critical thinkers, those are the ones who's gonna so guys pay attention to this part very carefully. All right, so look at to give an example, indicate the response by shading the appropriate letter in each row. So each row you share what? Only one letter is to be shaded in each row. So you can share this and this. Only one. I have to choose one out of them, right? One letter is to be shaded. Examine the table and indicate which on the left is the prime number of or a composite number. So two is a prime number, so then share it. Six is a composite, so they share this. So it can be a composite and a prime, right? You guys would have discussed that in your teacher. 13 a prime, you share that. 15 a composite. So let's go down to the actual question. Read that instruction very carefully, guys. 36 says, consider the following statement below and determine whether they are examples of a finite or infinite set. Now, a finite set is countable, meaning it has a limit. All right? Infinite means up to infinity. There's no end. So I just wanted to teach you guys that are just clarify that. That's a good better word. At the start, all right. So, two digit prime number. So, a two digit prime number is it finite or infinite? And that would be finite. Why finite? Because there's a limit, you can count the number of them. It's two digit, you know, so it's 50. So, it can't pass 100, right? All right. Integers which are multiples of five. Multiples mean a five if it's continuous. Multiple five, then then you continue to infinity. People living in Jamaica. No, a lot of people in, live in Jamaica and three finds so, but it's countable. There's a limit. So that's finite, all right? So let's move on to 37. Hope you guys understand. We have three to go. Examine the table, indicate whether the call number in column two is a factor or a multiple, or neither a factor nor a multiple. So we're going to focus on column two. Notice what they see, guys. Read the questions carefully. Our focus is on column two. So they are saying, is 12 a factor of 24? Or is 12 a multiple of 24? 
are needed. Now we know that 12 is a factor. Of, I'm just gonna take it 12 is a factor of 24. Nine is it a multiple? Is it a factor of three or is it a multiple? So it is a multiple as a multiplier, right? 30 is not a factor, it is not a multiple, so we say it's neither. Now 150 is a multiple. So I kind of kind of run through this fast a bit. But nevertheless, guys, hit the like button. All right, we have three to go. Hope you guys understand what you're asking. All right, examine the figure below and answer 38. Which statement about the figure is true or false? So it's true or false. So we have a cube. And he said the figure has exactly six faces. How many faces does a cube have? Put that in the comment section. The figure has exactly six edges. Is that true or false? The figure has exactly eight vertices. Put that way you think. If it's true or false, the figure has no parallel lines. Put that if you think it's true or false. So we, we just did the selection one and then we on to the. I'm going to give you guys one minute to complete that. So at the end, guys, hit the like button. So just join in. Watch back the video from the start. It is a very, very interesting thing, right? All right. So let's go now. You guys should be finished by now. The figure has exactly six faces. That is true. Six equal faces. The figure has eight, six edges. No, that's 12 edges. All right. The figure has eight vertices. Now, the vertices are the vertices where they meet, right? So we have one, two, three, two. The figure has no parallel lines, and that is a line. So that's false. So if you add two, false, two, false, two, false. True. 39. The graph shows the bicycle sale for the first seven months of 2021 and it's a growing monthly bicycle sales per dozen. All right. So it's per dozen. So I guess one represents a dozen, right? As you say, per dozen. All right. Let's see what they say. The bicycle, oh, yeah, see there on the scale per dozen and it's January, February, July. So now it says no. June, wait, I just want you guys to be able to see. I'm going to give you guys one minute to do this also. No, I don't need more than a minute. All right, so look at the graph. And it says June record the highest sales in bicycle. Is that true or false? Seven more bicycles were sold in June than in March. Is that true or false? More bicycles were sold in January than in April. Is that true or false? Now they are teaching you guys how to analyze. Well, they're not teaching and they're testing it. So your teacher would have taught you how to analyze graph and do that. All right. All right. Hit the like button while they do it if you're just joining parents and please share with the others. All right, so you guys should be finished now. All right, so let's just say, June record the highest sale. So the one who record the highest sale will be the highest bar. That is true. June is the highest bar or the modal function. So that is true. Seven more bicycles were sold in June than March. So March, right, here's one, and this is eight. However, it's by the dozen. So it will be eight, the number of bicycles sold will be eight times 12, right? And this will be 12 bicycles alone. So the difference is not. Seven. 
right? So it's seven times 12. So that is a false. Very nice question. Go by April, April bar ayah. So that is a false. So if you have two false, false, you are correct. So we're on to the final one. So the liberty of putting put in my number here. I don't know, persons always want my number. All right. So see my number there, as person is always asking, one next child to join the class, and everyone is welcome. So here's my number, so in grade four, grade five. So I say a bean bag is tossed randomly at the square below. Right, the probability that the bean bag when tossed will land on white or blue. All right, so we're gonna figure out total white and blue combined. So one, two, and when we say a blue or white, we're gonna add it, right? So that's three, four, five, White are blue, seven, eight, nine. So a combination of white are blue is nine. Let me just double check for all of them. All right, so that's nine. And the total number would be one, two, three, four. So that's 16. So that's nine out of six. Uh, this is something now in here. So, oh Lord. But they tried to check you guys they put this 5.6 percent no it would be 56 percent they tried to check you guys oh my god these people are crazy guys did the like button you have made it to the very end since mr linux benny um parents i know you want to your child to be a part of my class so one of my i know on five grade yes you are accepted you are in seven grade you are in three grade now our third grade you're going fourth grade yes you are welcome all right so guys, this is Mr. Linux Many. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys. This is Mr. Linux Many. Time out. No doubt. See you guys in another video. Share the video with others. All right.